Leica did it again. They made another watch. This time, it is a completely new watch added to their whole lineup of watches. Last week, I was invited to Leica's yearly celebration of photography in Wetzlar. And it was an amazing time because not only does Leica use this medium every year to celebrate highly talented artists in the photography space, but they also use it to present either new cameras or new products for the Leica brand. Last year, they introduced the M6 analog camera. I had a lot of fun playing around with it when I was there. And if you wanna check out my review or my first hands-on with the M6, you can check out the video here. This year, however, they decided to launch a new watch, the ZM11. If you're wondering what ZM stands for, well, it means Zeitmesser. And this is basically the equivalent to the English word timepiece. Among other watch creators like Brit, aka Watch Gringa, or Marco from Swiss Watch Gang, and a couple of guys from Hodinki, and some more watch enthusiasts and journalists, we were able to go hands on with the new watches before they hit stores in November. The ZM11 comes in three different dial colors. We have a red and black, we have a nice shining blue, and we have a coffee black, they call it. This is more like a outdoorsy, military-themed, khaki, some kind of combination. The watch comes in two metals, in steel and in titanium. It has a case diameter of 41 millimeters, is 100 meters water resistant, and it has a Swiss movement in partnership with Kronod. This is something that I found a bit strange because the ZM1 and ZM2 both have a German made movement that is exclusively made for Leica and was created from scratch. And now we have a Swiss made movement. It kind of doesn't feel right. However, it has 60 hours of power reserve. It is very, very nicely finished. And overall, it looks stunning. At first glance, the ZM11 reminded me of these uh, Porsche design watches that we had back in the days with the round case and the integrated bracelet. It kind of feels like this super sporty vibe that was emitted by Porsche design watches back in the day. I was also missing the very distinct Leica gimmicks. Like for example, in the ZM1 and ZM2, they had their patented pusher crown that only Leica has. And this is something that I missed. Although they have a very nice Leica-like quick exchange mechanism because they were utilizing the button that we have on the Leica cameras to switch out the lenses. They implemented the same button on the back of the case to switch out the strap. When talking about straps, there are three different kinds. We have a rubber strap, we have a kind of canvas textile strap, and we have uh, both a titanium and a steel bracelet. However, the more I got to play around with the watches, the more I could appreciate the thought and the depth that went into creating the dial. They told us that the dial was heavily inspired by two very important aspects of photography, namely light and shadow. And this is represented by the changing of the colors on the dial, depending on what angle you look at it. So for example, if you take the black and red ZM11 and you look at it from a top-down angle like this, the dial will be black. However, if you change the angle of the watch, it will turn red because the dual layered system on the dial that they chose is that one side is red and the top part is black. And this is something that I truly appreciate because this brings back my thought from before with the gimmicks that were kind of missing. However, they did represent these gimmicks on the dial. Initially, my personal favorite was the black and red, which is also limited to 250 pieces and is uh, made out of titanium. However, the more I got to play around with the coffee black version, the more I could appreciate the dial and the color scheme that was going on. Maybe it also has something to do with the fact that 
the coffee black was very fitting and very matching my outfit that I wore that day. The stainless steel version with the blue dial is definitely the most commercial with the stainless steel bracelet. I think that this will be a great watch for the masses or for the specific niche that Leica is operating in. Overall, I must say I was impressed by Leica really being heavily invested into the watch space and really wanting to create fantastic products within it that are also in line with the Leica feel and the Leica design. I'm excited excited to go hands-on with the watches in a more depth review in the very near future. But for now, these are my first thoughts. This is my first impression. And if you want to check out the reviews on the Leica ZM1 and 2, there are two videos right here for you to check out. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, if you feel like it, leave a thumbs up. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.